This video shows you why the Golden State Warriors are owning the competition. The defensive small ball lineup of Belly, Otto Porter Jr., Juan Toscano Anderson, Gary Payton II, and Steph locked down the Phoenix Suns in the early third quarter and helped the Dubs outscore Phoenix 29-21, giving Golden State a 12-point advantage entering the fourth. After Air Canada, Andrew Wiggins, and of course the man behind all of this elite defense in Draymond Green, checked back in late in the third quarter and stayed on into the next frame, the Warriors continued to clamp Phoenix's perimeter scores while executing offensively, winning the fourth quarter 38-28. Here's a breakdown of how Golden State's versatility is allowing many of their players to hold their matchup in check. And stay tuned to see how Curry and the Dubs snapped Phoenix's franchise record 18-game winning streak. Before continuing, only 15.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The Warriors did what no one had done since way back on October 27th, and that was beat the Phoenix Suns. Let's quickly give some credit to Phoenix, who put on quite a run in the early going, posting the 10th longest winning streak in NBA history. This Suns team is going to be a problem for the Warriors all season long, but on this night, Devin Booker was out, and Mikhail Bridges missed spurts of the game with a hand injury. Regardless, the lengthy, active, and quick perimeter defenders for the Golden State Warriors were relentless at sticking with attacking players off the dribble, in some cases from 94 feet and in. This is seeming like a historically great defense for Golden State, as they're not only number one in defensive rating, but they lead the next ranked team by over four points. The gap defensively between the first-ranked Warriors and the second-ranked Cavaliers is a bigger gap between the second-ranked Cavaliers and the 18th-ranked Houston Rockets in defensive rating. And all of that success defensively goes back to the brilliance of Draymond Green. You probably didn't notice him all that often because defense gets overlooked a ton, but Dre was involved in every good thing that happened to the Dubs last night. And then you look at the stat sheet, and your eyeballs pop out. In 30 minutes, Green had 9 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, 6 steals, 3 blocks, 2 turnovers, 2 fouls, on 4 for 6 shooting, 1 for 1 from deep, and he was an unreal plus 25. According to Stathead, it's only the 7th time in NBA history someone has reached at least 9 points, 9 boards, 9 dimes, 6 steals, and 3 blocks. A shoe-in for the 2022 All-Star Game. Against Phoenix, Draymond had an A-plus game, leading the team in rebounds, assists, and plus-minus. But by no means is Draymond flawless. He has his games just like any other player has his off nights where he won't be able to put on a defensive imprint like he usually does. Some players are an anomaly, and Phoenix's beast up front in DeAndre Ayton was an example of that. In their first matchup, Ayton dropped 24 points on 11 for 19 shooting, and he couldn't be held down on deep seals, rolls, and duck-ins around the bucket. Not even the soon-to-be two-time DPOY could deal with the size disparity and the ease in which Ayton was able to get to his position. However, Draymond wasn't about to let that happen in the second round between Phoenix and Golden State. In round two, Ayton had to work much harder for his buckets, and as a result, he was a tad less efficient. He still managed to put up 23 points, but DeAndre was just 7 for 16 from the field. It's a testament to Ayton's eliteness that he was still able to score such a respectable number of points. Having said that, the Warriors made him exert every bit of energy to get them. Draymond was especially ruthless. By bodying DeAndre out of his comfort zone in the post, making well-timed weak side help rotations as the low man on Ayton's rolls, and forcing Ayton to become a jump shooter, Green was able to disrupt Ayton's rhythm the second time around. More significantly than Green's individual effort, it was his ability to scope out offensive game plans and control the pace of Phoenix's offense. The Suns dictated the flow of round one, but Green evidently spent some time in the film room and was ready for the challenge against the team with 18 straight Ws. Green baited out pocket passes as the roll man defender in an effort to intercept them. He displayed technical expertise in drop defense, exquisitely navigating the middle ground between the roll man and the ball handler. Green did that by cutting off potential release valves to the roller and suffocating the ball handler into a less than ideal position. Dre fluently switched onto perimeter players and used his elusive foot speed and fluidity to hound his matchup. 
As I briefly touched on a bit earlier, defense is all too often a job that players fail to get the credit they deserve for, considering it's more blue collar in nature than it is flash and fizzazz. That's why Green's value defensively has sadly been disrespected by the majority of NBA fans. The first thing that comes to mind at all times in any discussion you have about Golden State is Stephen Curry all day. Rightfully so, Steph's a god. But Juan Toscano Anderson perfectly described the lack of respect Draymond Green gets while being about just as valuable as Curry. JTA said, he is what Steph is offensively, it's just not sexy. The average viewer doesn't understand angles and being up to touch on a ball screen or sliding over and being the most important guy defensively trapping the ball. They don't see that, that doesn't show up in the stats. I watch him all the time and I'm just like, damn, that's impressive. Kudos to Draymond, Hall of Famer for a reason." End quote. In terms of his proficiency on both ends of the floor, this has debatably been the best version of Draymond we've witnessed since the prime years of Golden State's run to five straight finals. Dynasty Dre's revival on the offensive end has been very noticeable, while his all-time elite defensive awareness has brought the Warriors from a highly respectable top five defense in 2021 to becoming the stingiest unit the league has to offer in 21-22 and one of the best defenses in modern day history. Coach Steve Kerr is giving Green every bit of credit, saying, he's the best defender in the world. He captains the defense. He's the one directing traffic. He guards on switches. He'll guard DeAndre Ayton and everybody in between, and he's all over the place with his help. I thought Draymond was brilliant tonight, end quote. Offensively, Green is setting career highs in a couple of advanced and scoring efficiency metrics. His effective field goal percentage of 58.5% is a career high, his 59.8% true shooting is also on track to be a career high, and that just speaks to how efficient his scoring has been this season. Green's three-point shot still leaves a lot to be desired. He attempts one three-pointer per game, on track to be the lowest attempt rate of his career since his rookie season. His 35% success rate, though, has been a significant improvement from last year, but still not enough for defenses to respect his outside shot. However, there have been flashes of Green's shot being mechanically better, especially during catch-and-shoot situations. When given enough time to get his shot, but not taking too long to get his shot off to the point of overthinking it, Green has shown that he can occasionally make defenses pay for sagging off him. But getting back to the other end of the floor, and it's far from only the captainship of Draymond that accounts for the dub's all-time special defensive prominence in the first quarter of the season. In addition to Green, the wingspan of the Warrior wings and big men, combined with their IQ, is off the charts as well. Otto Porter Jr. and Andrew Wiggins both have wingspans of over 7 feet, they can move pretty well laterally, but more importantly, they're intelligent defensive players in terms of their instincts and awareness. So is Gary Payton II, who I could honestly make a separate video on. The 15th man's activity has been special, but the length and Wiggins and Porter Jr. gives them the ability to play multiple positions. The dub's defense is overwhelming to attack against. Trying to score on rangy wing stoppers and intelligent paint protectors often forces offensive players to overextend themselves and change their release point. Kevon Looney's right behind Draymond Green in blocks per game on the Warriors, and as I broke down in this video right here, which you can go watch after this, Looney's one of the Warriors' unsung heroes. Further proving their prominence at stopping the ball collectively, the Dubs have most of the positional leaders in defensive efficiency. Of course, Draymond leads his position in defensive rating, Wiggins ranks second at his position in that area, Steph's number one among point guards in defensive rating, and Poole's number one among shooting guards in that area. So, while this team's known for their offensive formations and brilliantly executed sets fueled by Stephen Curry, 1 through 15, the Warriors are a defensively based unit who can win games in any fashion, whether pretty, ugly, or a mix of both, as we saw in round two against Phoenix. For next video shout out, what makes Draymond Green's defense so elite? The top three commenters with the most shout outs by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Gar King DC, who says, what's most scary about the Bulls? They're a really low drama team with guys who are really unselfish and have something to prove to the entire league. 
They may be in the best position, psychologically speaking, of any team in the league, and they're still developing their chemistry. Imagine what this team is going to do in the playoffs. Thanks for every amazing answer. Hope all of you watching have a great day. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.